Welcome to our Sound for Video session. Today is the 6th of February, 2017. And in today's episode, I want to show you two things in relation to mixing. And again, we're going to do a short film here. This is one that I shot. I, I actually did the production sound work. And my friend Levi was the director of photography and the director. And uh, the talent was a guy that goes by his screen name is uh, Nitro. He is the sort of the spokesperson and the kind of the on on TV personality for a series of gasoline or petrol stations here in the United States called Maverick. And uh, we went out and talked to and interviewed people that are homeless in Salt Lake City, Utah. So let me just pull up this uh, project here and show you a couple of things. Now, first of all, we've gone through this before, but just in case you hadn't seen the previous episode, in terms of setting this up, the way we, we work this and the way a lot of productions like this work is gonna be a very short film, about three minutes long. And um, again, I recorded the sound separately from the camera. And then at the end of the shoot, I gave all of the audio assets, all of the audio files to my friend Levi, who was gonna do the editing. He went ahead and synced up the audio that for the clips he wanted to use. He did the edit, he sent it over to me to do the sound. And the way he sent it to me was as an OMF file. An OMF, an OMF file is uh, essentially an XML file that you can, bring into Adobe Audition, and it essentially recreates the edit that the editor did. So let me just show you what I mean by that. If I go ahead to import here, and I'm going to my project folder here, and the OMF file is right here. So we're gonna open that, and the first thing it does is it gives us another dialog, and it's asking for where the audio files are stored. So what I can do is I actually stored those in a different folder here, the raw audio folder. I choose that folder and it's finding all the audio files and lining them up into a timeline here. So we have now, um, just really quickly here, there's a pretty simple piece. We have all the dialogue tracks up here on what is now titled Audio 1. Um, this is called Audio 4 Left and Audio 4 Right. This is the music, the stereo music tracks right here. Now, there are a few things we want to do. First of all, I want to go ahead and select everything in the timeline here. And just so that I don't bump something out of sync, I'm going to come up here to Effects. Nope, I'm going to come up to Clip, excuse me, and I'm going to choose Lock in Time. That makes it so I can't you know, accidentally bump one of these out of sync. I can move them to different tracks, but I can't you know, accidentally move it and, and bump it out of sync. Now, the next thing I need to do is, is if I'm going to be doing the mix for a film, usually I want to have a reference video track as well. And it so happens that I have one of those, so I'm going to import that as well. And it's just a little standard definition file here that he gave me of the edit. And what I do is uh, I just grab that and pop it up here on the first track, just like that. And if I put it all the way to the left, it will be in sync. And you can see it, in fact, it does end at the same time. So that is the first thing. Now, second thing, I will do here is I like to generally rename my tracks, so I'm going to call this my DX main track, DX standing for dialogue, of course, and then here we're going to call this music left, and we're going to call this actually MX right, just to be consistent, MX being music, of course, in this case, and there we go. Now, the interesting thing is, is if I need to change the volume or the, the levels, on the music, I have to do it on two separate tracks. And that's a little bit of a pain, just takes more time. Um, but if I want to be able to simplify that process, this is what I, the first thing I wanna kind of show here. The first thing I would do is actually create a new track. So I'd come up here to multi-track track, and I'm going to actually create a stereo bus track. And we'll show you what all this means here. So I'm actually gonna do some color coding here too. The video is this kind of bluish color. Let's go ahead and keep the dialogue green, and then I'm going to change these other two to the same kind of golden color that we have here. All right, so all I do is click on this little box here, and that'll let me choose the color, and I think it's more golden, like the kind of golden, maybe orange. Actually, I think it's that color. Yeah, that'll do. Okay. Good enough. So now we have our Audio left, our audio right, and now we have this new bus, and we're gonna call this our MX bus, for music bus. Now, what I need to do is I need to take these two tracks and route them into the music bus, and then once I've done that, I can use the 
fader right here to change the volume on both of them at the same time. So the way you do that is I'm going to expand these just a little bit, and I just use the scroll wheel on my mouse to do that while I'm hovering over these. And then you'll notice we have four little buttons up here. Right now it's selected on FX, which means show the effects for each of the channels or each of the tracks. I want to switch it to this one here, which is the routing or the inputs outputs. And so what I can do right now is I can see that the way this works, this track right here, it plays out to the master bus, which is right here. So this is the final mix right here. But I actually want to instead route this to my MX bus. So I'm going to go ahead and change this, choose bus, MX bus. Do the same thing for the right channel of the music. Choose master bus, and we're going to choose, excuse me, music bus instead. Now what happens when I play this back, I can use this fader right here to change the level of the music, and it's going to affect both of the music tracks at the same time. So let's play a little bit back, um, and let me just kind of show you an example here of why I want to do this. <laughs> um, let me play back uh, part of the film. We're about right here. I haven't touched the dialogue yet, so it's going to be really messy. But first, what I want to illustrate is how loud the music is in relation to the dialogue. Um, and actually, let's get a part where he's doing a little more talking here. Whew, it's through the roof. It's hurting my eardrums here, and it's definitely clipping. So we definitely want to pull this back. And so what I'm going to do, let me play through that again, and I'm going to quickly pull it back using the music bus here. Yeah. Um, I can't really hold a job. Yeah. I can't leave me along with people good enough. They won't give me some security because they don't say I'm crazy enough. Well, you get along with me just fine. Only for a minute. Okay, so that helped. And obviously we're going to have to fine tune that a whole bunch here <laughs> coming up. But another thing that's nice about this as well, if I come to the effects now, um, we're going to show you something here. I've talked about this before as well. Is usually what I like to do to music is when I have dialogue with music that's supposed to sit behind the dialogue, what I like to do is do some EQ on the music to kind of carve out a space in the middle frequencies to make room for the dialogue. So instead of having to do two separate effects, one for the left channel and right channel of music, I can just do that here on the music bus. And what I do here is just select here, filter and EQ. Let's get our parametric equalizer. We're going to reset it to default. And um, we're going to come in here. Let's change this to 1500 hertz. We'll kind of pull that down quite a bit and widen it up. So there I've kind of car carved out a big space in the music for the dialogue. Let's just play it back again, and I'll turn it on and off so you can hear what it sounds like. Um, my family passed away. I have kids that don't want to see me. Yeah. Um, I can't really hold a job. Yeah. Can't leave me along with people good enough. They won't give me some security because they don't say. Okay, so we have a lot of noise in the dialogue track still that I'm gonna have to work on. But what we're what's happening here is we're kind of without having to pull the music back too much so that it kind of disappears into the background, um, we're able to kind of carve out some space here for the dialogue. So that's the first thing. This is gonna be harder to it's harder to see or hear right now. It'll become clearer as we get cleaner dialogue. Now, the next thing I'm going to show you is, um, and the last thing for this session, is I wanna show you um, an EQ technique I use for dialogue here that uh, makes a big difference. It, it, it is not intuitive when you first <laughs> try it or when I first explain it here, but I think you'll see how when you're mixing, it makes sense here. And the main thing we wanna do here is we have a ton, if I just solo this and play it back for you, we have a ton of noise going on that's kind of getting in the way of the dialogue. My family passed away. I have kids that don't want to see me. Yeah. Um, I can't really hold a job. So, what you can tell, we're, we are literally centimeters from the street. <laughs> and there, I mean, you can see some cars in the background. That's, a, that's the other cross street, just, you know, maybe a quarter of a block away. But um, we are literally standing right on the curb. And so there's a ton of traffic noise. So what I want to do here is let's go ahead. Now I could apply this effect to just this clip or I could apply it to the entire track. I'm going to go ahead and apply it to the entire track, but we're going to pull out our equalizer again. Again, you go into the effects here, choose filter and EQ, parametric equalizer. We'll go ahead and set that back to default. So let me show you something here. I'm going to apply a high pass filter and this high pass filter is going to help me accomplish 
this specific goal. What I want to accomplish is I want the dialogue to be easier for the audience to hear and understand. Now, the problem we have right now with this dialogue track is that we have a ton of traffic noise. We're right next to the street, literally right on the curb, and uh, we're hearing all this noise that's kind of getting in the way of understanding what this guy is saying. So let me go ahead and play through, and I'm going to show you how I would pretty aggressively apply a high-pass filter. And at first, you're going to think, well, that doesn't sound very good. You've taken away all the bass. Um, but it will once we put the music back in, when we mix the two of them together, I think it'll make a little more sense. Listen here. Here, okay. Um, my family passed away. I have kids that don't want to see me. Yeah. Um, I can't really hold a job. Okay, so let me just uh, kind of play that again with it off, and then I'll turn it on and turn it back off. You'll see visually when it's on and off. Here it's off. Here, okay. Um, my family passed away. I have kids that don't want to see me. Yeah. Um, I can't really hold a job. Yeah. I can't get along with people good enough. Okay, so that sounds kind of thin, right? <laughs> Let's put the music back in and see if we can hear it a little better now. Okay. Um, my family passed away. I have kids that don't want to see me. Yeah. Um, I can't really... Okay, not perfect. I have a lot more work to do. But now you can see how things are changing a little bit here. So let's, uh, let's do a couple of things. I'm going to turn off this EQ. I'm going to turn off this EQ. And let's listen to it again. Up here. Okay. Um, my family passed away. I have kids that don't... Okay, let's turn them back on. And listen one more time. Here. Okay. Um, my family passed away. I have kids that don't want to see me. Yeah. Um, I can't really hold a job. Okay, it's a subtle difference, but it makes a difference. And we obviously have more tuning to do to get everything just right. But you can see how those different techniques make mixing a little bit more straightforward. So what we covered here again, just in review, we made a music bus to make it a little bit easier to manage the two separate music tracks since we really want to apply the same things to both of them. We want to be able to pull the fader down for both of those in unison and we want to be able to apply this equalizer to both of them without having to do it on each track individually. And then we also made an EQ here which allowed us to apply a high pass filter and get rid of some of that low frequency traffic noise that was kind of muddling again getting mixed up with the music and kind of creating all this energy that made it harder to hear what our talent were saying was saying so hopefully that was helpful for you hopefully that makes sense and uh, uh, we will probably cover a lot more detail of course on mixing in the future if you have any questions go ahead and leave those down below get out there and make some great recordings and we'll talk to you again next week take care everybody